here what we have is a BP and that's directly across the street from another BP so. What I say with my art is very important to me, and I think it should be important to an artist. It's, it's, not, it's not just that you're an illustrator, and by that I mean an illustrator basically can paint anything in the most realistic way that you can imagine. Uh, I think a true artist uh, likes to uh, fall back on his, his imagination, his life experiences, his interpretation. All these things come into play. Um, haven't been working on the plate too very long, but it, it is the current work in progress right now. Uh, it's kind of a real funky image. I wish you could see it. It's this character that I use a lot in my work. He's kind of re represents mankind that's supposed to be smart, so I naturally give them little bigger heads. And here lately I've been giving my figures a little pot belly. You know, just, uh, uh, I don't know, just kind of the way we are, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so many of us get away from the eating right and let ourselves get fat and uh, we're just now becoming aware of a lot of the problems from there. But I think the title is going to be something like um, The Power of Knowledge. And this guy actually, if you really saw him, he's standing on these different figures and mathematical symbols, but the size of the weight is so great compared to his body and everything. The idea is to even wonder how this guy could lift such heavy weight. Interesting concept. I was born in St. Louis, Missouri. My mother left uh, when I was about seven or eight years old and moved to Florida, South Florida, Miami. And of course I went with her. Uh, my mom and dad were divorced and of course I was living with my mom. So I grew up in South Florida. I was down there to just about, I think it was 26, 27 years old uh, when I uh, moved to North Carolina. Uh, my wife is, is from Greensboro, by the way, and uh, we had a great fortune of being able to, uh, with the job that I had, a full-time job at the time, working for Delta Airlines, I had an opportunity to relocate here in uh, Greensboro, which we did, and that pleased her very much. So, I've been a resident here since 1970. I, I did not come into art in uh, any kind of traditional way, I don't think. Um, I was not interested as a child uh, in any way that I know of in, uh, with art. In fact, I was uh, well into my 30s before I had any interest in kind of not academically uh, trained. I started out initially uh, going to places like GTCC and the City Arts Program in Greensboro and some private uh, people that taught. And to be honest with you, I pretty much learned the, the technique of painting uh, rather quickly and uh, did a lot of painting in oils and watercolors. Well, I reached a point where I wanted and felt a need for some additional training. I just, I just didn't feel like I was credible as an artist. This was in the late 1980s. I uh, enrolled in uh, uh, up here at Guilford College in their art program. Okay, I'm Roy Nidor, professor of art at Guilford College. Been there many, many years. <laughs> First impressions were that John was kind of a somewhat of a amateur artist mostly working in watercolor, but he had the desire to push beyond that boundary, dedicated, you know, to go back to college and discipline himself that way. He's kind of an engineer of sorts. He can fix anything. He can, he can fabricate just about anything. And uh, I think the printmaking medium fit his sensibilities as far as the technique and the 
kind of labor-intensive, detail-oriented uh, approach. It has a weird and odd and weird quality to it that can be very mysterious and very moving. It turned out to be something that I was immensely interested in. I fell in love with it immediately. It didn't take me long to figure out that this was what I wanted to do as my primary means of expression in visual art. Once I left the school, I uh, built this studio and turned it into primarily a printmaking studio. Actually, the studio, which, except for the brickwork and the shingles on the roof, I built myself. We did uh, all the framing and uh, laying out and design of it, and the hard work. My wife helped me, so. Having a studio at your home, too, is really nice because, um, you know, it's something to be said. Uh, you get up uh, at midnight, something on your mind, you come out, do a sketch or do some work, or you want to work late. I can work late well into the wee hours of the morning. It's a, it's a big plus being able to have a studio within your house. I'm John Clark. I'm a senior at Guilford College. Um, I study printmaking under Roy Nidor, and I've met John Gall through the class, and I went to his studio before, and I really enjoy his work. The main thing is that there's two types of artists where there's someone that, that does it as a business, where they do something that they want, that they know people will want to see. So they're driven to make landscapes or watercolor, something to go in a restaurant that they know is marketable. As opposed to that, people like myself and other artists like John Gall, who are driven, something inside of them is asking them, like there's no, there's no choice about it, they have to do it, they have to, they have to get something out on paper. And it defines who they are as, per, as people, it defines who we are. Ultimately, you develop your own language that reflects on your, your values and what you like and you know, just things you're into. I'm not really sure what, what it's all about. It just seems to be something that's that's in his mind that's just it's just unravels. It's like all these things are just clutter. It's it's trying it's trying to make sense of everything of his world, I guess. The big thing about being an artist is that you have something upstairs that, that has to come out. So I started incorporating lots of the symbols and graphs and diagrams and and so on that you come uh, and find in mathematics and begin to incorporate them in with the human figure um, and I came up with this idea of human, human equations and in essence what I am doing in a very kind of surreal way uh, using various uh, uh, planes, various perspectives all in a single image perhaps is to show their kind of the predicaments of man, uh, and I'm saying these in a whimsical way. I think I love being able to show with all our smarts, we still don't have things right. We're still screwing up, no matter how hard we try. And it's, it's just this ongoing series of how to I do these, these images where are showing some of the predicaments that man gets into, and uh, kind of poke fun of this a little bit. fell into a trap that I think some artists can fall into. You think just because you sell your work that makes you an artist. And I honestly don't think that is true. I don't mean to be down on the art scene, but there are, uh, there are a lot of artists selling work that, that I have come to believe, because it happened to me, that it is not the highest of quality and is not the, the, the greatest of fine art. So just because you sell something doesn't mean it's good. Just stop. Stop. Two seconds. 